Currently, from within this intercept method, we are simply logging a message in the console for each request we are sending from our Angular application. Now, we do not use interceptors for logging messages. Instead, we use it for manipulating request or response object. And that's what we will do in this lecture. So here, let me go ahead and let me remove this console.log statement. Now, a very important point to note here is that a request object is immutable. We cannot change it. So what we need to do is, in order to modify the request, first we will create a clone of that request object and we will modify that clone. And to create a clone of the request, what we can do is, on this request object, we can call clone method. Okay, and it will create a clone of this request object. Let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's call it modified request. Now, when we are calling this clone method, it will simply create a clone of this request object. But what we want is when the request object is cloned, in that cloned request, we also want to modify something. For that, what we can do is to this clone object, we can pass an object and there we can specify what do we want to modify. For example, let's say we want to modify the request headers. So for that, here we can specify headers. And to that, first of all, we want to keep all the previous headers from the original request. So this original request, it will have some headers set. So we want to keep those headers. So for that here, we can simply say request dot header and here we want to add some new headers so we are going to use append method because as we have learned earlier using the append method we can add new headers to the request header and there we need to pass a key value so here let's say i want to add an auth header and for that let's say i want to set the value as abc xyz so this is just for demo purpose in the original request, we don't have any auth header. But now what we are doing is we are creating a clone of this original request. And in that clone, we are setting this auth header and its value is ABC XYZ. And now from here, using this next method, instead of returning this original request, we are going to return the modified request. So when we are calling this next method, we have learned that now the request will be sent to the next interceptor if there is any or it will be sent to the server. So the request which will be sent to the next interceptor or to the server, it will also contain this auth header because here we are sending back the modified request. I hope this point is clear. So now let's go ahead and let's test this implementation and keep in mind that this logic will be applied on all the requests which we are going to send from our angular application so on all the requests no matter whether it is a get request post request put request to delete request on all the requests there will be a header set called auth with this value abc xyz so let's save the changes let's go to our application let me clear everything here and let's go ahead and let's create a new task And now before I click on this create task button, let's go to network tab. Let's clear everything here. And when I click on this create task button, a post request will be sent to this URL. Let's open that URL. And there let's go to headers. And if we go to the request headers, if I scroll down, there you will see that we also have this auth header set. And its value is ABC XYZ. Let me clear everything again. And now let me click on this fetch task button. So it will get all the tasks from the database. So you can see that task is being displayed here. Again, if I open this request and if we go to the request headers, there also you will see this auth header set and its value is ABC XYZ. So for all the requests which we are sending from our application, now on all those requests, this auth header will be set. So in this way, we are modifying this request object using this interceptor. And you're not only limited to manipulate just request using interceptors, you can also manipulate responses. So when we are calling this next method here, if there is 
no more interceptor ahead in that case it will return us the response and the response which we will receive as we already know it is going to be an observable so we can manipulate that observable that means we can manipulate the response here using an observable operator so here what i'm going to do is this line here it is going to return us the response because after this auth interceptor we are not executing any other interceptor so this modified request will be directly sent to the server and the server will return us a response so this expression here it will return us that response now what we want to do here is we want to tap into that response so for that i'm going to use an rxjs operator and to use an operator first i need to use pipe and to this pipe method i'm going to pass an operator called tap so here i want to use this tap operator and in order to use this tap operator we are going to import it from rxjs slash operators okay and to the step we need to pass a callback function that callback function is going to receive an event so as we learned in one of the lectures that when we send a request to the server and when we receive the response in between that there are several events which can happen for example the sent event can happen the response event can happen when we receive the response and so on so this event object it is going to store that event and here for now what we'll simply do is we will check if the event type is response so for that here let's say if event dot type if it is equal to http event type and to use this http event type we also need to import it from angular slash common slash http so if the event type is equal to http event type dot response in that case we simply want to log a message saying that response has arrived for that let's use this console.log statement and there let's say response has arrived and if you want to log the response as well let's say response data and after this let's say we want to log the response data for that let's say console.log and to log the response data we can simply say event dot body so this event will have this body property only if the response type is response because once we have received the response then only the event will have the response body right with this if we save the changes let's go to our application and let's go to console tab let's clear everything here and let's click on this fetch tasks button so as you can see here it is logging response data has arrived and here we have the response data okay so this logic here it is also getting executed now here i am simply doing some logging i'm simply logging some message when we have received the response but if you want you can also manipulate the response by using other operators like the map operator or the filter operator or something like that here i don't want to modify the response that's why i am simply tapping into the response and i am logging a message in the console but just like how we are using the tap method you can also use map method or filter method or any other rxjs operator to modify the response and then use it in your application so in this lecture we learned how we can modify the request or response using an interceptor now in our application we can use multiple interceptors so in the next lecture let's learn how to create and use multiple interceptors in our angular application